Meerkat? Dog. Meerkat? My name is Dr. D. Thornell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so fun. I moved to Fairbanks, Alaska over 30 years ago and started a veterinary practice. You won't be a piggy anymore. No. Animal House is one of the top hospitals in the state. Oh, my goodness. But some places are so remote, I got my pilot's license so I can see all my patients. He doesn't like this hamstring touch. Hey, hey, easy now, easy now. Because all animals deserve the best care. Having a mask right where her lymph nodes are really concerned me. And it's my mission that I treat every animal like my own. That's like a big cyst. I don't know what I'm going to go into. Am I going to open a treasure box or am I going to open Pandora's box? sick one <gasps> here we are back again with another sick goat <laughs> how's sophia sophia's doing fine oh it's bailey goodness. this time look at you i love you our first go round was with sophia oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then oh, just go under the so skin sorry. there you go and she had a urinary tract infection Today we brought in Bailey. She has a cyst on her jaw, and I need Dr. D to check it out. We have five goats all together. Mainly we got them for Melanie, our granddaughter. I love goats as far as you can measure the universe. Bring this little cutie in. You have a La Mancha. Bailey is a La Mancha Tockenberg breed. Um, we like the La Manchas because they really don't have ears. Well, you picked a good breed because they are really high milk producers with really high fat. Oh, great. So, Bailey, you should be really good, but I hear you've got a bump on your jaw. Dr. D is like Dr. Goat Woman. <laughs> now, how long has this been there? This one's been on about a week and a half. I'm going to get Alex to hold her a second. I'm just going to go okay. ahead and take a needle and stick in that. Okay. So I'm going to take a needle and actually aspirate some of the material out of the lump to see what's going on here. So I'm just going to hold right here. It's going to be a little pulp. No, and Alex might have to hold a little better on that neck. Hey, Melody, can you come over here and hold a butt? Okay. Come on over here and just put your hand right here so she can have push up on her. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, I don't like it either. I don't. Yeah, it's white, white pussy stuff. Do you know what causes abscesses? Uh, well, what's happened is somehow she's got a little open area that bacteria got into. And so the bacteria started living under the skin and went, woo what a nice place to live. And then her white blood cells went, we don't like them. So the war began. And then it started blowing up in this big war game called an abscess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lance it and open it up and let them all escape. And then I'm going to flush it with something that kills bacteria but doesn't damage tissue. All right, I'm just going to shave a little fat. Oh, look at this. You're like a poodle now. That is a really, really nice. Oh, I didn't do anything yet. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, that's not that bad. It's like popping a big old pimple. It didn't hurt. That, that should feel better, it's okay? okay baby. I don't really react that bad to things that are disgusting, gross, that kind of thing. Do this a second, which we need to keep it open. We don't want it to close back up. Well done. All right, all right. Bailey screamed more than I've ever heard her scream, but I think it was more uh, that she was just offended that she was being held. Are you better? She said, I'm not even going to make eye contact, thank you. Darn, I don't even have goat treats today. Do you have any goat treats? Can I borrow one? Okay. Oh, here you go. Goat treat. Oh, come on. She does not trust you. Let's see if she'll take it from you. Yeah. <laughs> Kids. 
There's not too many animals that really want to thank me. In fact, if I tried to explain to them I'm your advocate, they'd go, yeah, right. So there you go. So you can get your goat. Yay. I love the way Dr. D responds. Um, she truly cares. Perfect. I know there's, hold on, there's a little dingleberry on the backside. <laughs> there you go. I'm very happy that every time our goats leave here, they feel better. Better? Perfect. Good, thanks. How are you doing? Good, doing well. Who do we have here? We've got Letty. I'm bringing Letty in today because Letty's breath is god-awful. It's gotten to the point where I feel like I've just got to see a vet, and I've been told Dr. D is great, and I'm really hoping that she can tell me what's going on. Letty, how are you? And look at here, we have a little Buddha belly to rub yeah, on Letty. Yeah, she's a heavy girl. Oh, she's fluffy. That's right. So come on in. Let me take a look at our girl. Can I ask? Oh, wow. So you have a pig leg. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have the most boring Halloween costume every year. Oh, but that'd be so <laughs> cool. It works. Wow. It works. This happened to me when I was 14. I'm 36 now. I've been like this for longer than I ever had a foot. It's who I am. It's my identity at this point in time. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to detract from Letty's problem. And so, no, Letty, you have some bad breath. Now, tell me Letty's whole history. Um, Letty is about 10 years old now. She is deaf. She's deaf. How do yeah. I talk to her? Um, this is good dog. Okay. Um, she knows good girl. Good girl uh, is this? Yeah, good, good girl is good girl. Oh, good girl. She's got a couple places that are questionable. Okay. Like, see that back tooth? Yeah, it's rotten, huh? Yeah. Okay. I think this really needs to be addressed probably under anesthesia. Okay. Um, and so we can get in there, and if there's a bad tooth, we'll take care of it. Okay. Does she snore at night? She snores like a chainsaw. These little guys, the brachiocephalics, have just as many teeth as a collie, but they're all crammed into one little spot. Okay. Her epiglottis that closes her windpipe can actually get caught on the soft palate, which is the roof of her mouth. So when it's trying to swallow and close, it's getting hooked here. So it's like, <sighs> the soft palate's getting back in there and she can't breathe. Okay. And long term, it has issues with the heart and everything. Sure. And we could actually laser that and stop it. Really? No way, you can stop her snoring? Well, I can help it, okay. um, but I can minimize it. And when we've got her down for her dental, we need to talk about taking a little bit of that off so she can breathe better. That's awesome. Well, it will sound better at night. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, let me go get you an estimate. I'll be right back. Okay. Later. Okay? Thanks. So whenever I put an animal like Letty under anesthesia, I try and see if there's anything else I can do. So I only have to anesthetize her once. So to save Seth some money... Why not fix the soft palate right now? I feel very comfortable doing that. She's a healthy dog. She can handle it. Well, <laughs> since you are my my hero today, it's a theme, pirate theme. And I do make I, I have seen, yeah, I, I made this one, but it started out as a Halloween costume and said, you know, I want to be a pirate. And I said, okay. And, uh, you know, over the years, kind of said, this is really practical. I mean, when you start talking about taking expensive prosthetics into the river, it doesn't make sense. That is so cool. Well, thanks. Yarr. Um, yeah, it is. So it would probably come down between that around mount. That's great. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. And, I mean, really, if I were to let that go and not do anything, she's a 10-year-old dog. So yeah. my gut is... You know, how many good years do we have left? And Well, it'll make her more comfortable. Sure. And you can sleep. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you. you're, yeah. you're my pirate hero. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. So you know what I'm going to do? What's that? It's my favorite hat. <sighs> it's yours now. Yar. Yar. <laughs> All right. Awesome. No food after about 10 o'clock at night. Awesome. Pick her up Tuesday afternoon. Yes. Good news.
Dr. D is headed to Delta Junction, 100 miles southeast of Fairbanks, for a house call. I'm on my way to SK Farms to visit Tony Williams. I'm going to see Red, his mule, who has a strange lameness, and I hope I can find something that will help him. So if I can't fix Red, Tony may have to put him down. Hopefully, I can do something for him to save his life. Hey, you're a good boy, Red. How's it going, you guys? Hi, Dr. D. So you got helpers here today? Yeah. So you're the Wranglers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, who's the one that's having problems right now? Well, this mule over here, he's one of our best and favorite pack animals. We live in an area that is motorized restricted. And so when you shoot a big 2,000 pound moose, you have to use pack animals for getting that meat home. You know, we eat that all winter until the next year. He's got this double lifting action when he picks up his back foot. I think it's what you call string halt. Okay. Tony believes that this is string halt. That's a problem with the long nerves, which happen to be in the legs of a horse. And so the muscles don't work right, so they have this spastic walk, and there's no real treatment for it. Let's pull him up here forward a little bit so I can start looking at him. Go ahead and just walk him straight through. Did you notice that one day he was walking normal and the next day he was bad? Yeah. It's not truly a lameness. It's like he's walking funny. Slapping that foot down after he pulls it forward. Here, walk him around this way and maybe see if we can get him to trot. Easy, easy. easy. Did he run? He'll run off and leave me. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. It's most exaggerated when he's walking. Yes. I'm just trying to stand here and let him get used to me and just get used to me petting him and give him a little butt rub. What happens in string halt is the tendons lock up because they don't have enough muscle. The fact that he can't get better, if that's really what's going on with him, means that he's going to be limping and off for a long time. Just want you to get, be friendly. I wouldn't want somebody to just walk up and touch my butt either like that. I'd probably kick him. Red is one of our favorites. He does his job so well. But if Dr. D can't help him, then uh, we will have to put him down. For a couple different things here. It's like I'm noticing there's kind of a lump right in this area here. I'm at SK today because Tony has called me. His favorite mule red is a lameness. Tony believes that this is string halt. I'm going to compare it with the other side that he's walking normal on to see if I can see. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah, you're not no, like that. Uh, easy now, easy, easy. now. It's all right, buddy. Okay. But unfortunately, red doesn't want to be a cooperative patient today. Hey, hey. He doesn't like this hamstring touched. He looks a little different than actual string halt. It might be something else. Yeah, it could be. And the string halt I'm used to, they really hike up. It's more of a kind yeah, of like yeah, that kind yeah, of walk, yeah. and he's slapping his foot down. Yes. He can pick it up, but then it's like it straightens out on him. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he's that goosey on this side. I'm actually putting a lot of pressure on it, and he's not acting like he wants to kick me. I think it's really something to do with his muscles. So what I want to do is watch him walk a few more times just to see if I can isolate it since he won't let me, like, grab the leg, plank on a little bit, unless I want to, like, be shot over the fence in that next dirt field. Yeah, I think he's pulled some. It might even be, like, his Achilles. I have a feeling he probably slipped or did something stupid one day, got caught under something. I don't think this is string halt because it doesn't look like the same string halt that I've seen in other horses. Come on, buddy. I think Red's really pulled a muscle or done something to a tendon, which can take a while to heal, which means rest. Okay, I'm going to turn him loose. All right, we're going to get out of here because I think he's going to chase me. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'll be back to check on Red to see if I'm right. It'll be interesting to follow him up. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. I am relieved because she thinks he'll be okay. That's my man. Good morning. Good morning. I've gotten Letty. Oh, okay. Letty, the deaf Boston Terrier, is coming in to get her soft palate clipped and her teeth cleaned. She big snore. She snores like a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just so excited to see Letty after her surgery um, and smell her breath and hear her not snoring. Um, it's it's going to be great. All right, you have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Come on, baby girl. Oh, look who's here. There she is. Hey, she's a new drink girl. She's a good girl. The girl. She snores at night, so we'll definitely be taking some of the soft palate just a little bit. That. You won't be piggy anymore. No. She's got the roof of her mouth and then the soft palate's an extension back. So we're going to pull that little soft palate out and then we're going to laser it. All right, sweetie pie. Ooh, you have a lot to cram back in that throat. She's got a huge soft palate. There you go. I can already kind of see where I want to... Where do I want to trim? She's going to be able to breathe so much better. We're all good. I'm going to start up my laser. Ladies, to start your engines. So the laser is going to go through and actually cauterize at the same time that we're um, cutting. And so... It won't bleed as bad, so it makes it really nice. Almost done. There it is. Oh, no, Mr. Bell. This was actually occluding her airway so bad that it was all the way down in her throat practically. But now here we've got a dog that you can actually see her throat. Oh, it looks so nice. And you couldn't see that, her trachea at all. So you can see where her tube is going down in that larynx now is where she's breathing. So she can breathe so much better. Oh, this is much, much better. I know. But the more important thing is why did he come in? She had bad breath, and I found the real reason. And look at this. You have a loose tooth right there. I think there's a dead elephant in her mouth that stinks so bad. And I can see the reason why. There's a tooth that's just dangling and rotten in the back of her mouth, causing a terrible odor. Look at that little bad boy. Look at the nasties that are on that. That was just rotten. Now, well, something for the tooth fairy. So much happier now. I'll let you clean them real quick, Alex. Okay. Oh, she's going to be a happy camper. I'm so glad we got this done. I mean, this is going to help her from breathing. She'll be a new dog. I'm sure the dad will be happy, too. There's my baby. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Pretty good. Who do we have here? We have Chena. Well, it's Chena and Lucky, actually, both of them. Chena and Lucky. But Chena's the one that you need to look at. Today, I'm bringing in my pet parakeet, Chena. She has a large mass on her chest. I noticed it was getting large pretty quickly, so that's when I grew really concerned. Well, look at here. I didn't know you had birds. I do. How do the kitties like them? <laughs> well, they're up away from them. Hi, Chena. How are you? Oh, look at you guys. And I think you already know something's up, don't you? Parakeets, when they see me come into the cage, just think I'm like a big cat. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh. You weasel. <laughs> there we go. Fragile. Well, that is certainly interesting. Wow, that is a pretty firm looking mess. Does it hurt him? Oh my gosh, oh gosh. Poor thing. I don't know if this is like he's got a discharge here. This is very difficult to watch. Let me go back, I'll be right back. My concern is I don't know what she can do if there is something wrong. I don't know what you would do for a to help a parakeet. There you go. And shut that one. No, no, no. 
They're trying to crawl out of my little like that. Okay, all right. Whoa! Come back here. And that is the reason I went ahead and closed the doors. And I was trying to reposition my my uh, little blankie so I wasn't getting bit. This thing on her chest is pretty scary. This is right where she's got a lot of organs underneath where that thing is sitting. I could expose all the organs of this poor little bird in just a few seconds. I don't know what I'm going to go into. Am I going to open a treasure box or am I going to open Pandora's box? It's like a pocket. Yeah, it's like a big pocket or something here. Tina has this mass on its chest. Is it a cyst or is it truly a growth that's actually attached to tissue underneath? It's like a big cyst. It is a very strange looking mass, but I'm going to get it out. Wow, this is interesting. I'm examining Chena awake at first because I want to see what this thing is. This looks a little more attached. She's not moving or acting like it hurts at all. But I want to get deeper inside. I don't know where it's contained or where it started from. So I'm going to have to put her under anesthesia to do that. Gas time. There. Oh, that's pretty gruesome. I wonder if he got nailed or impaled by something. Poor little guy goes all the way through. Boy, this parakeet won the prize today for stumping the doctor. My first thought was something was stuck in there, and I know that she had these perches, and the perches looked worn. So I thought, did he impale himself and have part of that in there? Because it was so hard. But the more I took out of there, it started looking more like a sebaceous material or a cystic material and not like wood. I know one thing. When in doubt, cut it out. Well, I think let's go ahead and wake her up. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Little eye just popped open. Hi, honey. I'm relieved that all this is is a feather cyst. There's no other organs attached when I pulled the cyst out. So I expect her to make a full recovery. Want to play a trick? I know her really well. She's a really cool kid. Oh. Uh, we got a bird that's this color, right? Yeah. Can you grab one? Nicole, my practice manager, is trying to help a local shelter that has parakeets that have been given to them. I gotta have fun with this one. I mean, this bird looks identical to the seven birds that Nicole is trying to find a home for. About the same size. This has been one of the most interesting cases I've ever had. Okay, really? so she's got this. Is it bad? It's a she. <laughs> it is a she. Okay, is it bad? Because she went ahead and had this little hole right there. Oh, my it's God. Like a little hole. Oh, my God. And look what we pulled out of it. Oh, shh. Came right out of it. Right out of there. <laughs> oh, that scared me. Now yeah, you have no, two. Yeah, no, no, no. My parents will commit me if I have any more animals. Oh, 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 don't, don't, don't. There you go. Okay, there you go. In this case, I'm pretty sure it was a feather cyst. Really? If I pick through some of that stuff, it might even look like there's some that could be an old feather. You don't have to treat him with anything. I was afraid that he was going to have to put down or something. I just didn't know what you could do for, the, you know, what do you do for a bird? You wing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very relieved. I get to take Gina home, so I'm pleased. Good morning. Uh, can I get some fuel? Today we're going to Arctic Village for a veterinary clinic. And it's about 100 miles north of the Arctic Circle. It's a long trip. And we have to be very careful about our fuel. There is no place for us to fuel up there, so we have to haul extra fuel. This is a common problem flying in rural Alaska, and uh, making sure that you have fuel uh, to get home. It's a little nerve-wracking. 
Well, there's a glove box, which I've checked. I've checked into the seats. When we go to the village, we have to rent planes to get there. And right now, we're trying to locate the keys for the aircraft. Apparently, uh, someone who's used the plane last has taken them home with it in their pocket. So we're kind of in a holding situation. Good morning. Couldn't happen to know where keys for a 172 are. We're expected to be there, and we're behind again. Here we sit in Fairbanks. What's that right there? You can see the key. It's on a glare shield. You wouldn't leave the seat like that. So we have keys? Well, as it turns out, when I put the clipboard on top of the instrument panel, it slid over the keys, and they were hidden under there. And we have just found the keys. So how many senior moments a day then I That's have to... That's you're allowed. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're an hour late. Let's go. Arctic Village is the farthest north of the villages we go to, right on the outside of the wildlife refuge. I love the flight. It is absolutely stunning. We see caribou, we see everything. Well, hello, Lisa. How are you? It's been a while, hasn't it? Looking for coming. Oh, We've known yeah. Lisa for about three and a half years. Hi, Nicole. Long time no see. She's been very instrumental in arranging the clinics. I've lived in Arctic Village for about 15 years. It's a very small village, about 120 people. Everything in Arctic Village has to be flown in. Even the gas, everything. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, this has a clutch. I don't know how to drive a clutch. Lisa, I don't know how to drive a clutch. Now you know why they pick us up. Put your feet up, up, underneath it, and then go up. enough to be able to use this school. We have fresh water, good lighting, and a place for the animals to recover. We're going to set the surgery table up right here. Then we can just open up these tables a little bit. Everybody in our village knows the doctors are coming in today. There's going to be a lot of animals being seen. Good girl. Lisa has brought her daughter's new dog, Pinkie Pie, in to be spayed. Pink pie a lot. Sit. Oh. Sit. Hi, Linnea. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. You got big. I'm seven years old. Wow. Pinkie Pie is kind of like a lab, but she's a runt of the family. <laughs> I will take good care of her, I promise, okay? All right. I just want to watch. Well, we're going to have you go out and look. Linnea, come around out here for a second. Come help me with Dion. Most people want to watch their own animals have the procedures done, and we encourage it. However, Pinkie Pie is being less than cooperative, and we're going to have to muzzle her. Okay, Sandy. And I don't want Linnea to see that. You tell her no. No, 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 stop, stop. It's okay, it's okay. When a pet isn't socialized properly, they become fear aggressive. And because of that, they can be very, very dangerous. So we put a muzzle on them, not only to protect the handlers, but still. 
but also to help calm it down. In Arctic Village, Dr. Terry is trying to sedate Pinkie Pie, a puppy in for a spay. You're okay. Why don't you step out? I think she thinks you're here and she's protecting you or something. Yeah. And that might help. Okay. Okay. They act different when mom and dad are here. Okay. Okay. Pinkie Pie was having a little bit of trouble with a stranger handling her but also was trying to protect mom because she was really not well socialized yet. After mom left, Pinkie Pie did much better. Well, doggy, life's a little calmer now. It's 2.15, there's no way we're gonna get all these done. Well, we'll get done when we can before the weather turns sour. Let's figure that. It looks great now, but the weather report says that bad weather's on its way. Mother Nature is bigger than anybody, and um, unfortunately, she makes sure we remember that. She's been sleeping very well. Well, it's good you're spaying her. Uh, she had a strange ovary on the right side. Why do you think her ovaries were like that? I think it might have been congenital, just something she was born with. It's not even a worry now because we took all that stuff out. All right, we're done. Getting that hair will grow back in about a month and a half. You guys all done there. You're Scott, right? Yeah, yeah. Hi, babies. We just need you to do some vaccinations? Yes. Okay. You guys ready for this? Hmm? Who's first? We need vets coming in because not everybody can afford to go to Fairbanks to fix their dog. Just for us, it's 380 bucks just for us to go to town and then got to pay for the dog. And nobody's going to do that. All right. You guys need anything else? No, we're good after this. All right. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. just for vaccines. This one, the race is on. Dr. Wise and I are hurrying to get as much done as we can before the weather moves in. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Marie. Would you like to take this puppy home for donate to Marley Village? You bet. Oh, we thank can do you. That. And these are Burning's puppies? Yes, these are Burning's puppy. One is female and one is a male. Yeah, I'd be happy to take them home. Oh, Twist my you. arm. <laughs> Between Dr. D, Dr. Wise, and I, we have rescued maybe 50 puppies and God only knows how many older dogs from the villages. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome, sweetie. Dr. D's dream of having the large no-kill shelter is going to provide veterinary care and rehome these animals. Hey, Dr. Wise, I got two little black bears. <laughs> they do look like bears, don't they? They do. And you're just so little. Oh, that's pretty cool. They should be pretty easy to find a home for now. Come on, Bambi. It's okay. <laughs> My dog, Bambi, I'm here today to get her fixed because if she has puppies, I would want to keep them all. <laughs> So this is the last one for today. Oh, good. Well, we're about an hour later now. I was hoping it would be the time we got here late, so... I'm going to start packing. We've got to get packed and get out of here if the weather's starting to come in. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to everybody. We're going to have to reschedule. And now, it'll be a month before we can get back here and get those animals taken care of. Uh-huh. Is she asleep? Yeah. Well, we don't do it away. Oh, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm dirty, I'm very dirty, but it's worth it.
Are we ready? Saddle up. We have to come back. It's a town of 103 dogs. We don't go. Who's going to? Who do we have here? This is Dreams. All right. We're bringing Dreams in. She has a real swollen lump where her thyroid should be. We're kind of touchy about cancer in the house, so we're really kind of worried about it. I lost my last dog to cancer, and uh, right now I'm battling brain cancer, so let's just hope he doesn't have anything besides a little, another fatty tumor, hopefully. And what kind of food she is? How much per day? Two cups. Dreams, what's going on? Hey, Dr. D. How are you guys? I'm okay. Uh, how are you? Oh, oh the, uh, I'm she, dreaming. She's the treat lady. <laughs> yes. Dreams has been a patient of mine since she was this big. She's got a problem today with her bump. I know she had that one that we did a little fine needle yeah, aspirin yeah, on back right here. Right and now it's up by your neck, huh? Yeah. Well, she does have one there, doesn't she? Yeah. With the history of Dusty and her cancer, we tend to be a little overly <laughs> concerned about those. Well, and you should bumps, be. Especially where that one's at. Having a mask right where her lymph nodes are in her neck really concerned me that it was a disease called lymphosarcoma. And it's treatable, but it's chemotherapy every week, very expensive. And I certainly don't want to see these guys go through that. So what I'm going to do is stick a needle in there and suck out some cells and then put it on a slide and look okay. at it and see what I can see. <laughs> oh. Can you see it? Do you want to find needle aspirin today? Let's just go, yes, yes. So excited about it. Okay, here you go. Good girl. <laughs> well, she sure catches food good. Of course. <laughs> Playing catch with food. Meerkat. Oh, that's a good meerkat imitation. Yeah. Are you ready for this? <laughs> what I'm going to do is Stay. I got that mask right there Stay. between my... Stay. I had this before. Stay. It shouldn't hurt too much. You know what I like about this one right now, even looking at it, is I look like a big grease ball coming in there. So maybe it's another fat tumor. Yeah, that would be nice. Maybe we just need to go on a little doggy diet. Yeah. I hope, I hope. Oh, my goodness. Maybe it's another fat tumor. I'm sitting here at the microscope looking at the material that I drew out of the mass that is on Dream's neck. Oh my goodness. Look at all those nice little fat globules. Hallelujah, it's chunks of fat. This is the nicest chunk of fat I've seen in a long time. She's got the greasy, grimy tumor, so that's okay. Yay! Good job. So, good news, it's all fat. Nice big chunk of fat. So. <sighs> Thank you. It's just fatty mass. We don't have to worry about it. We'll just watch it, and if it gets too large, Dr. D can remove it. We're relieved. <laughs> well, I did notice that her weight is kind of creeping up a little yeah. bit, too. Dreams has now gone from 62 pounds to 69 pounds in just a matter of a few months. Now we got to figure out why she's so fat. She is at seven years of age, and that's about the year that I like to go ahead and grab blood on her. And sometimes I have low thyroid dogs that start getting these fatty accumulations. Let's just do it. All right. I know. Oh, come on here. I found some other treats. Some dogs have an actual allergy to their own thyroid. If that happens, they don't metabolize fat right, and they start getting these little lumpy bumpies all over them called lipomas. All right, sit. Look, she shapeshifts into a meerkat. Meerkat, dog. Meerkat, isn't that cute? <laughs> Just sit normal. Just for a second, I'm going to play vampire. I want to fuck your blood. Oh, good girl. 
Could you squeeze your head a little bit so we can squeeze more blood out? There. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's a good one. one. All right. All right. There you go. That's not a good thing when they start putting weight on that fast. It could be a metabolic problem. It could be something wrong with her thyroid. I'll be right back. All right. Do you only feed her two cups a day? Yeah. One cup in the morning, one cup at night. Oops. <laughs> I feed her two cups a meal? That's a total two cups. So I give her two cups every meal. He didn't listen. Well, dreams. Your blood is dreamy. Her thyroid's perfect. Mm. So that means I can't fix you with a pill. That means we have to go on the four-letter word. Diet. Yeah. We figured out what it's the It's uh, his fault. No. He's feeding her four cups a day. Four cups? He said two cups. <laughs> I didn't say per day, and neither did he, so I gave her two cups of meal. Apparently, my instructions were not clear enough. I had brain surgery. You can't blame me. <laughs> well, that is probably why she's gaining her weight then. You know, it was just a little misunderstanding. Now she's going to look at her bowl and go, Whoa, what happened here? That's okay. You'll feel much better for it. Anyway, good news. I was really, really worried when I saw she was coming in with a mass on her neck. One cancer at a time is enough. Yeah. Just never, now, I don't want to see you guys feeding her a lot of food, okay? So <laughs> no more feeding her a lot of food, all right? I had brain surgery. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, that's your excuse for a lot of things. Hey, it works. Just outside Fairbanks, Letty, the Boston Terrier, is at home with her owner, Seth. Come here. Letty is back to 100% after her surgery. Zero. Get on. Get on. All right. Uh, she's breathing a lot better. Her breath is 1,000% better. Come on. It's a lot easier to sleep with Letty in the bed now. Come on. It's really important for Letty to be healthy, particularly as summer comes on. And, you know, we're going to be going out and camping and canoeing. So I need Letty to be in ship shape, and I'm really happy uh, with where she is right now. Let's go. Dr. D really went above and beyond. You know, she addressed my initial concern and then also looked at what else we could do to make Letty a happier dog. And because of that, I'm going to have a great summer with this little fur baby. Is that red? Yeah. Did he stop limping like that? No, he's still like... Like a string ball. You've never been to s &K Farms, have you? No, this is my first time. We're on our way to see Red. He's a big, hefty mule, and uh, man, he had a lame leg, and the leg wouldn't walk right, but boy, it could kick. <laughs> Gotta love these Alaskan bridges. Hope he didn't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just when you think you're driven off the edge of the planet, we come to s &K Farms. Yeah. Did you guys take him out packing or anything? No, we never actually took him on another trip, but uh, he seems to be doing fine. He, he runs up and down the field. And... Well, he seems like he's having fun right now. We haven't done a lot with Red since she was here last. We decided to let him go and, you know, we're hoping that it would get better, and, and it has. Did he stop limping like that? No, he still, like, throws that. Like a string throws that leg forward. We could try to catch him if you want. Yeah, let's go and try and... I'd like to see how he walked. All right, well, we'll get a lead rope or two and see if we can catch him. Oh, he's got an open eye now. I'm just going to act like I didn't make eye contact with him. Run, Dad. He's getting hard to catch again, and that's a good sign. <laughs> 
See, he favors it a little bit. Yeah, but he works with it pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. All those bad stories are telling me about you, Red. Hi, handsome. It's all right. Oh, Red. Oh, no. It's all right, handsome. There you go. Why don't you just kind of walk him out and let Alex look at him, too? That back. Yeah. Watch over here, Alex. See, yeah, and it, it comes down and flaps down, but Watch not it. nearly as bad. Red's doing great. There's still a little hint of a, you know, a little abnormal gait. But I'd like to see if it gets fixed after he gets him out hunting. I might say go work the pants off of him. See First, if it gets yeah, it gets better. No, it get better, better yeah. because if you really work them and get the muscles in shape and good and toned up, I think it may cure the problem. This is a real happy ending. I think he's ready to go back to work, and really, I think that's what he wants to do. All right. You're giving him a clean bill of health so he can go back I to work. I did. As a bless you, my mule. You can go back to work. <laughs> yeah, see, like he likes that. He wants yeah. to go back to work. You do good this winter.